When I first got out of the Army, I went straight to, the, to Mexico to the mission fields. And uh, I, I spent time with a missionary named Wayne Myers. Wayne's 100 years old this year, still preaching. And I ran into a lifestyle that absolutely pricked my heart, grabbed hold of me. I saw a, a man that was living to give. I mean, he, he was he was living his life on planet Earth with the purpose of blessing somebody, lifting somebody, embracing somebody. And I saw that. I said, ah, this is it. I, this is the I'm, I'm embracing this. And I right there made a vow to God and to myself. And I said, this is how I will live the rest of my life, living to give because it's the very nature of God. So I want to encourage you to hook up with that same lifestyle of giving. I mean, embrace it, living to give. And you can give to your local church. You can give to other ministries. I've partnered with ministries since around the world since I was a teenager. And I tell you, God's blessed me for it. I wouldn't trade it. You can also partner with us. We're always happy to em embrace partners. We pray for them every day. But as long as you hook up with that concept, that lifestyle of God, living to give, then it'll be a blessing to others and it'll certainly be a blessing to you. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello, everyone. God bless you today. Welcome to More Than Conquerors program. Terry Mize Ministries, we are delighted to be with you. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> we always have a good time. I know. We really do. Terry and I look forward to being with you every single program. And it seems like we're fresh back from somewhere and we've gone and seen the goodness of God in a faraway land and then mm -hmm. come back in and do these programs to share with you. Um, you know, our I guess our objective, darling, all the time is just to Stay full of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. I mean, we have to. <laughs> There's no option. <laughs> there are no options. Not if you're going to win. <laughs> there are no days off anymore. You know, we do want to rest our bodies and, and take care of ourselves and, and be healthy and strong. But, you know, on the other hand, the, the fire to go and the fire to bless and teach and preach the Word of God is just uh, unquenchable when you're full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Um, we've been talking about um, last program. Uh, the, the wonderful, uh, I think, understanding that the Lord gave me, um, and Terry has lived by all of these 55 years of ministry there in Acts chapter 1, um, that you can't allow clocks and calendars and decimal points to torment you, distract you, harass you. Uh, the big question of life, when? <laughs> when am I going to find a mate? When am I going to have this uh, a baby? When am I going to get the job of my dreams? When am I going to get that promotion? When am I going to all these things about house, life, cars, you know, direction for right, your life. Right, right. Um, what, where, when, how? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, um, your own soul will try to torment you. Uh, besides um, just life in itself, a clock, a calendar, a decimal point, you just, you know, that your body clocks are ticking and, you know, there you only got so much time left on your ticket. And, um, you know, I just I'm just always trying to figure out here what's my what's my number one response to anything, any emotion like that that tries to float through my brain, any kind of feeling I have of, oh, we've got to get this done. We've got to get this done. We, you know, anything at all like that is to step back and remember what the Lord showed me out of Acts chapter one, when all that was crashing down on me uh, one day during way back in the 90s. And Dean and I were pastoring there in Corpus Christi and, and we were in the middle of a building program and there was so much happening. And when is this all going to get resolved? And when is the money going to come in? And and when is, you know, Dr. Whoop and Diddle going to, you know, stop criticizing? 
you know, all the things that are go on in life and people do, and, and we find ourselves in the middle of like a boiling pot of hot water. I was just sitting at my kitchen table one day, the house was empty, and I'm, I'm just kind of reading and going through, and I'm thinking, uh, you know, sometimes you could read the Bible and say, well, that didn't help. <laughs> or over here with that, well, that's good, but that's still, Lord, I, I got to have something. And so I'm just praying in tongues and I'm, I'm listening and listening. And I, my eyes fell down on Acts chapter one here. And it's where the disciples, Terry, they come to Jesus and, um, he had already, uh, resurrected from the dead. They're sitting around talking. Jesus is sharing with them. And John, he, he talks about John the Baptist, and he talks about all the things that have happened and are going to happen. Um, and so when they were assembled in verse 6, it says, they ask him, Lord, is it time? Is this the time when you're, now that you're resurrected, and now that you've come back to life, and now that we're all together again, is this the time when you're going to set up your kingdom on the earth and return back and restore it the kingdom to Israel. In other words, their mother had already asked if they could sit on the right hand right, or their left right. hand. So they're thinking, okay, here we go. Is this the time? You know, is this it when, when everything's going to get resolved? And I, I hear a lot of people like that talking today about, you know, okay, we've got to fix this and we got to, this is all going to get back and we're going to get this back. And, and I'm, I'm just, um, I'm thinking as far as the timing goes, we better have the answer Jesus gave, you know? When is it all going to get fixed? Well, the answer that Jesus gave them is <laughs> doesn't sound real comforting right at first. He says, well, the seasons and the times is not for you to know all that. It's none of your business. It's none of your business. Not your, not your department. It's not your department. The clocks, the calendars, and the decimal points, you cannot let them beat you. You just cannot let the natural little capsule of time that we're living in out here in the universe be the thing that the devil uses to torment your soul with about the time on the calendar, the time on the clock, or what's on either side of the decimal point at any particular time. And any, in any decision making time in your life, you have to set those things aside, lay your hands on them and say, I commit this calendar, this clock on my phone, whatever it is. And, uh, the decimal points, maybe even stack your bills up and put your checkbook out there, debit card, all of that. Just lay it all out like Hezekiah did. Just lay it all out before the Lord and said, you're not going to tempt me. You are not what runs my life. The mm -hmm. clocks and the calendars and the decimal points and my checkbook is not what det determines who I am. Who I am is somebody that loves God. And I'm going to be full of the Holy Ghost. And I'm not going to let the things of this world, much less a goofy thought in my head or a demon floating through the house, <laughs> you know, we're looking for somewhere in the neighborhood to harass and hinder and light. You know, you're not going to have me. I'm going to submit myself to being full of the Holy Ghost, just like Jesus said. And then he, which is what he told his disciples. He said, he said, the father has appointed these fixed times by his own choice and authority and his own power. He said, I don't even know it. I don't even know the time when I'm going to set up when the kingdom of God is going to be restored. He said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all the other parts of the world. So that day when I was sitting there at my kitchen, just so fraught with, with, you know, the question, great questions of life of when, where, why, how, who, what am I going to do? You know, what's my part and all, what can I do, Lord? How can I fix this? Uh, if you're a fixer, you're always tormented by how can I help? You know, what can I do to fix it? And I just got from that day, you know, the, the, the best thing I can do for me and everybody else, heaven and against hell, is to be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, we mentioned, too, the uh, last time we were together, Romans 8, 26 over there, it says, The Holy Spirit already knows what is in the mind of God, and He searches the hearts of men, because He's trying to find a way to tell you what he knows. <laughs> the Holy Ghost knows what's in the mind of God. And he's in here searching on the inside of you to try to communicate in vocabulary or knowing what you need to do and give it to your understanding. He's trying to help it gurgle up from down here 
And the more you you pray in tongues, the more you cast your care on the on the Lord, confess that I'm full of the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, it's like you can just be driving down the road or or walking through your house. You can just be you can just be doing going about your daily business, and all of a sudden, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do, Lord. This is what I'm going to do. So it's amazing to me. You know how it all works, oh, and it works from absolutely. the inside. You know, God, you know, heaven doesn't have any clocks. No, thank and you. It doesn't have any calendars, <laughs> and I doubt if they have any decimal points. No, right, right. Golly, can you imagine? Can you imagine living? But you without know, we all said last that? week that we're going to start dealing with faith one hundred and one. Yes. I mean, the ABCs of yes, faith. What a comfort we, to you, my soul. You know, soul. Renee and I have lived this life for so long, for over fifty years, um, that and people that have been in faith for so long, it's like we have our own vocabulary. Yes. You know, we know what we're talking about, yes. but we forget sometimes that Maybe newer you, people, younger some people yeah. wouldn't know some of the phrases we use or what we're talking about or how to do something. So we want to really get into these next few right. weeks about just faith 101, just the ABCs of faith, how to make this thing work. Yes. You know, I, I was thinking the other day, Renee, um, you know, faith always demands action. We've yes, said that over and over and over. Faith always demands confession, yes. declaring something. We've said that over and over. And I was thinking just the other day about a young married couple that you and I have known when they were just kids. Right. Uh, both of us have known the boy since he was a little guy. Right. You know, because his parents are good friends of ours. Yes, yes. And then I've known the young lady all her life since she was born because her parents were good friends of mine and still are. Right. Um, and, and, and of course, they grew up and they met and they got married. And, and, and the young lady uh, started partnering with me in missions when she was just a teenager. Right. I think she started sending me $10 a month when she was like 13 <laughs> years old or something. And That's uh, right. just, just all her life, she'd send money. That's right. Those parents and, trained. Uh, and then well. when they got married, right. of course, they continued to partner with us and, and, right. and to pay their tithes to you know the, their church and, and, and to do the things of God. But... Uh, she and he both love us. Right. And love the ministry. And she's just been a cheerleader for me forever. Right. And just loves the things I do. And, and she's been to Jamaica with me a few times overseas and stuff. And so they got it in their heart and talked to, to each other as newlyweds. Right. And said, we want to give Terry Mize $100,000. Right. Well, they didn't have $100,000 and had no way of getting $100,000, but yeah. it was their faith. Right. And they said, yes, let's do it. We want to give Terry $100,000. We're going to give Terry $100,000. In the name of Jesus, we're going right. to give him $100,000. And so they literally got their checkbook. Yes. <laughs> now, this is what we're talking about faith and how faith works That's and right. steps of faith. They got their checkbook and That's wrote right. out a check. To Terry Mize Ministries for one hundred thousand dollars. Now, had they had they sent it to me or put it in the bank, it would have bounced, uh, you know, <laughs> higher than the ceiling because it, it would have been a rubber years, check. It, would, yeah. it wasn't any good. Yes, but they didn't do that. They put it in a drawer, undated. And then they'd take it out on a daily basis or weekly basis. They'd take it out, put it on the table, Pray and over. say, this check is going to be good, and we're going to send it to Terry Mines. Right. They'd put it back in the drawer. And time had passed, and, and you know, they'd take out the check and lay hands on it. We're going to send this check to Terry Mines. We're giving $100,000. That's right. And they, they kept their faith on that yeah. until one year, For just years. after Christmas one year. I was deer hunting with yeah. my sons and grandsons. We were driving in the car. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and we were on our way back to Tulsa. And I got a call from her, and she said, "We just, we just sent you a hundred thousand dollar check." <laughs> they didn't tell you. Prior no, we to didn't that. know about the. We didn't prior know about stuff. that. We didn't know the and testimony. I said, you did what? <laughs> I knew the kids didn't have a hundred thousand. <laughs> My goodness gracious! And they said we've had this check made out since we got married. They've been married several years now. And they said, we've had this check made out and said, yeah. we get it out and pray over it and put it back in the door and get it out and pray over it and put it back in the door. And she said, but now it's good. Now we send it to you and you can put it in the bank. Now, see, that's how faith works. And their timing was perfect. Yeah. Their well, time. But had they said, hey, we're faith people. We're just going to write a check for $100,000 and put it in the bank. It wouldn't have <laughs> been any good. That's not no, faith. That's, that's right. presumption. No, that's not wisdom. You know, my dear friend yeah. Fred Price wrote a book it's decades ago. Fred's in heaven now, but he was such a good guy and man of God and preacher and faith teacher and a good friend and uh, and a partner of our ministry but uh, he wrote a book called faith foolishness or presumption and presumption yeah are you in faith 
Or are you just in foolishness? Right. Or are you just presuming that God's going to do this? Right. And so many Christians get in trouble. In right. fact, I'm sure you can still get that from, from their ministry, yes. every increase yes. in faith in California. Outstanding. Uh, faith, foolishness, and presumption. And it will, it'll help you and bless you. But so many people don't know the difference between faith That's right. and foolishness right. and presumption. Right. So had they just written the check and sent it to me, that would have been foolishness and presumption. Right. But they waited until it was faith. It finally turned into faith. That's so Faith good. finally produced. Faith That's finally right. grew. That's right. That's until right. Until that check was good. You know, handling <laughs> money, the Bible says money answers. Ecclesiastes over here says sure. uh, money answers all things. And in fact, in the 11th chapter of Ecclesiastes, there is such profound information in there and lifestyle on how to handle investments, money, uh, knowing the how to read the times and the seasons and things like that that are in your own personal life. And then th- there's just some guidelines here of what never to do and then what always you should do. And it's like, you know, when you don't know what to do, right. you pray. Right, right. <laughs> you know, it's like... um and what is it in James chapter five? He says, you know, if you're if you find yourself you're in trouble, it says if you're afflicted, pray. <laughs> if you're married, says. sing songs. You know, if you're sick, call for the call elders, the elders of the church. church. But it says if you're in trouble, pray. pray. And that's the same solution that's in Acts chapter 1, in Romans 8, and then over here in in Ecclesiastes 11, Terry, that that God, excuse me, has a, a very definite plan of how to run your personal life. Just like we mentioned in the other program, Psalm 139, all the days of your life are written in a book. Yes. Before it says, when, when God was watching you being formed in your mother's womb and life was given to you, there was a book written in heaven with your name on it. And, and David says, all the days of my life were written in that book before as yet there were none of them. Right. Right, right, right. Before you ever took your first breath, before you ever lived one day of your little life, God had everything planned. So the praying and But tongues, you're required yeah. to live by faith. Yes. We know what God said. He meant what he said and said what he meant. He's big enough to back it up. Exactly. But he still requires us yes. to supply the faith part of it. To make it happen. That's exactly right. What Terry just said. So that's just so good. You've got to. You see, faith, faith is not a one size fits no, all. That's right, darling. It's individual. Everybody has to grow into their right. faith. You can't do stuff on my faith. I can't do stuff on somebody else's faith. It's so and, individual. And as I said personal. last week, I've told Bible school students for many years now. Now, I'm going to tell you some Bible testimonies, some testimonies of mine, some things that I've done around the world by faith. But I said, I almost hesitate telling you because I don't want some of you saying, well, Terry Mize did this. I'm going to go do what he did right. because I'm not your source. I'm not your, Jesus right. is the source. Jesus is the example. And, and those crazy things I did are seemingly <laughs> crazy, seemingly wild, That's seemingly right. reckless faith. Right. Uh, they made sense to me because I knew where right. my faith level was. But now somebody new, just to some Bible school student that I'm preaching this to, that's never done anything by faith, right. then they can't just put on my faith shirt, yeah. you know, my faith hat, and say, I'm going to do what Terry Mize did. Because they fail, and then they wonder why God's Word doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't have anything to do with God's Word. It's that they, they weren't at that level. So it's you like, need to always know where your faith level is. What can you exactly. believe God for? If you've never believed God for $100,000, then don't just jump up here tomorrow and say, I'm believing God for $100,000. You know, you start, <laughs> oh with, start with $100. Yeah. Again, that's faith, know? foolishness, or presumption. Uh, exactly. Proverbs 19 says to be, I mean, this is so profound. This helped me so much through my life because I was always a, a, you know, just rush in where angels fear to trod and and I was always the one quick oh well I'll fix it I'll and I mean I started out as a young girl my mother uh, they'd say well do you ne- we need we need three uh, mothers to cook cupcakes my hand was up first yeah. <laughs> I'd volunteer my volunteer mother when I could which didn't cost you anything yeah because it didn't <laughs> and, it, and I would always volunteer I was always there quick well let me fix it let me do that I mean I would be like the one to to rush in with no breaks to rush in where angels fear to trod and try to fix everything. And I found out through the years, Terry, that is detrimental sure, to, sure. to a type A extroverted personality like me because Proverbs 19 says to be over hasty is to miss the mark and then man frets against the Lord, you know? 
I mean, it's just shocking to me. Um, that, that should really help you. Um, you know, in areas of your life where you are out there trying to figure out with your clock and your calendar and your decimal points, how can I fix this? Right, you know, right. Well, you know, if faith, Again, you have to grow into your faith. Yeah. And not try to, you know. Now, sometimes you can ride on someone else's faith. Right. I, I've taken people to the mission fields with me before, and I say, look, again, they'd be, they'd be scared about getting yeah. sick. Or right. scared about terrorists. Or scared. And I say, look, if you're with me, you'll be okay. Right. You, I've you heard know, you I've say got the faith so for often. this. I'm, I'm yeah. doing it. It's my trip. I'm in spiritual authority. So if you go with me, you won't get sick. Right. If you go with me, and you don't care what you eat, you'll be okay. If you go with me, we'll be safe. Right, and so they could ride on my faith because I I was in that spiritual authority. It's my trip. I'm in charge. Sure, you know spiritually. And uh, same way with my wife Jackie. Uh, you know, Jackie used to tell me over all the different years, <laughs> crazy things we'd do and go and right, drag right, her around right, the world and right. four little, four little kids drag them around the world. Right. And and she'd say to me every now and then she'd say, she said, "Did God tell you to do that?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah." She said, "Okay." She said, "If God tells you to do something, exactly." She said, "I have faith in your faith." Yes. She said, "I know you hear from God." Right. And she said, "If you'll look me in the eye and tell me God told me to do this, she said, I'll follow you anywhere. Exactly. I'll pack up those four kids Absolutely. and follow, follow sure, you around sure. the world." But she said, "If you just th- say to me, hey, I think we'll go here,' she said, no, I don't know. <laughs> if, if it's just you thinking you'll go, <laughs> no, or you think right. it's a good idea, she said, but right. if you tell me that God told you, she said, I do have faith in your faith. So she knew how to she knew how to tag on to my yes, faith yes. and how to ta- and how to submit under my spiritual authority. Right. But again, it's it's on a it's, the things that are faith to somebody, and yeah. listen to this, or you'll miss it a million miles. You go off and say, Terry said that what? No, listen. Fa- fa- things that are faith to some person would be a sin to somebody else. Right. And let me explain what I mean. There's things that I can't do in my life because it would violate my faith right. and be a sin, therefore. I'd be violating my relationship with God yes. because God knows where I'm at and I know where I'm at. And if and if I'm going below that, mm. then I'm not meeting the mark. But so there's things that you could do as a young Christian or as, a, as another Christian, you know, as a pastor or whatever. You could say, hey, I do that. And, and I'd say, I don't have a problem with you doing it. I just can't do it. Right. You know, for me, it would be a sin. Uh, you know, there, there's things like borrowing money. There's things I, I just won't borrow money for. Right. Other people can do it. Don't have a problem with it whatsoever. They just go to the bank, borrow the money. Hey, they're, you know, but there's things I just say, no, that, that's not that's not going to happen. I, if I did it for me, not for you, but for me, it would be a sin. That's, I've got to believe God for this particular thing. Let me give you one example. We've only well, got about I'm, four I'm minutes. I'm just going to say this one oh. thing, D- just to just to uh, help, help a yourself. little further. Thank you. Uh, Dean used to say about that same line. He'd tell our congregation, when it comes to personal faith, he said, "What is one man's faith is another man's unbelief, or presumption, or foolishness. Presumption or foolishness. So that's why it's so important in First John chapter two, Terry." For it says, you have an unction from the Holy One, and He teaches you all things. Sure. So what He's what the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you to do is to teach you how to be the best you you can be. Right. To Absolutely. go out there and act in faith and walk by faith and make decisions and do the things that you're doing. No, absolutely. I need this in the next couple of minutes that we have here to, to share this with you and, and, and to get it across so you're not, don't miss the point. But uh, when Jackie and I returned from the mission fields the very first year, we brought back our son, Lynn. He was a two-year-old kid. Uh, we came back on our first Christmas and uh, came back in. Yes. And here we are, brand new missionaries, gone to the mission fields. Now it's Christmas. We've come home. And of course, uh, we needed money. Yeah. You know, of course, we didn't have any partners back then. Right. Nobody knew who we were, and I didn't write a newsletter. <laughs> no and we just went to took yeah, a Bible no and a baby newsletter. and a wife and went to Mexico. And yeah. so we came home, and it's Christmas time, getting close. And uh, so uh, my mother came over to my house, to my place I stay in, and she said, "Terry, I got you. I got you a job while you're here for the holidays." She said, "Brother, so and so, you know, down here that owns the." Uh, grocery store will let you work at, at the store while you're here and make you some Christmas money. And, and I said to her, well, I said, well, thank you. That's very sweet of you. It's very sweet of him. But but thank you. I can't do that. I've got a job. That's she right. She said, oh, you already got a job? I said, yeah. I said, I'm a minister. And I said, I work for Godson and Company, and they pay me. 
and pay me quite well. And I said, I, I can't, I can't do that. Well, she didn't understand where I was coming from, so I made her mad. <laughs> and she said, boy, who do you think you are? Are you too good to work? And I said, you know me better than that. I went to work in public when I was 11 years old. I've worked all my life. I started my own business when I was a teenager. I started a produce company. I would go down in that Midland, Texas hot sun 110 degrees and unload a train box car of 100 pound bags of potatoes all by myself that, and that's manual labor physical right. manual labor right unloading a whole train box car by myself 100 pound sacks of potatoes i said you know me better than that right. and uh and, and i said but but i can't get a job because i've got a job and then uh, Jackie's uncle came over, who was our pastor, and he said, hey, brother, so-and-so down at the car dealership said you can sell cars while you're here. And I said, thank you, sir, but I've got a job. Tell him that, and I appreciate it. Well, who do you think you are, young man? Don't you want any money for Christmas? And so when they left, uh, I, I went into uh, where— uh, I went into where our Chester drawer was, the, the big dresser drawer. And I reached in the back of that and pulled out these paintbrushes, yeah. five or six paintbrushes. One of them was Russian red sable. Man, I just rubbed that on my face. That, that's mink. It just felt so good, <laughs> you know. And I told Jackie, I said, you see these paintbrushes? She said, yeah. Uh -huh. And I said, you know, and I know I can go out of here and paint Christmas signs in the next two weeks and make several thousand dollars. Right. I said, I've done it all my life since I was a little boy because my stepdad taught me how. Mm -hmm. And I said, when you and I dated, I taught you how. And you and I did it. When you and I married and we're in the Army, uh, we went out and did it. And, and we made money. And I said, right. you know, I can do that. She said, I know when you can do it. I just don't know why you don't. And I said this. And we're so out of time here. And I said this. I said, because we live in Mexico. Right. And I'm an illegal alien in Mexico. I can't get a job. So if we get, if I paint now and get us some Christmas money, we go back to Mexico exactly. and money gets tight. What am I going to do? I can't get a job in Mexico. I'm going to have to come back to America, paint signs, get some money, go back, yeah. be a missionary, come back, Set paint signs. I said, failure. that would violate my faith. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm too good to work. I'm happy to work. But I said, I can't violate my faith and make, make sign painting or a job my source. God's got to be my source. And if I break and do this just one time, right. how many other times will I do it and leave the mission fields and come home and paint? And I've gone way over our time. But I want you to get that. They don't That's anybody right. walk out and say, Terry said, I don't have to work. I can just sit around and believe God. No, it's no, not what no, I said. No. I said, don't violate your faith. Know where your faith is and uh, don't violate that. That's right. Well, our time is gone, as Terry said, but we, we know we've helped you. <laughs> and we're going to tell you one more time, you are more, more than, than conquerors. conquerors. Hello, everybody. Renee and I just want to remind you that the greatest miracle of all time and the only eternal miracle is salvation. So uh, let's just do that right now. Pray this prayer after me. Father God. I come before you today to accept Jesus. I believe in my heart Jesus is the Son of God. I call on you today according to your word. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a new creature. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and I'll serve you the rest of my days in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says you're saved, you're born again. So write us, let us know, tell somebody that you prayed with Terry and Renee and that you gave your heart to Jesus. We love you. God bless you.